with Joshua Daniels. I am the senior site manager working at Gascoigne West Phase 1 in Barkin. This project is working for B First, which is the London borough of Dagenham Barkin. Um, we started on site in July 2019, the Enabling Works. This is where we began the security site holding to make it secure. Um, then we began the asbestos removal um, and then the demolition. So all the existing buildings that we demolished, we used the materials on site to make a hardcore and crush, kept it all here um, and then made a piling map just so that we could then begin all the piling for the foundation. So we actually finished piling at the beginning of May um, and now we're starting our construction programme for the three blocks. Um, these are the blocks behind us, ranging from 13 storeys high. Um, so the construction of the groundwork is happening at the minute. I, so a little bit about myself, my journey. So I started off um, leaving school. I always knew I wanted to be in construction. Um, so I actually signed up for the construction diploma. Um, this was in college in Haven Sixth Form. Um, and it allowed me to become a building surveyor. Um, and then once I got to the end and could be a building surveyor, uh, it really interested me in the project manager and the architect side of it. So I applied for university. Uh, I managed to get into Oxford Brooks University, one of the best for architecture and the built environment. Um, and then I signed up to the project management construction degree and I thoroughly loved it. It was a four year course. It consisted of one year placement in the industry um, and then the year placement that I got while working um, just gave me all the, the, the hunger and the achievement that I wanted to get out there. Um, and then applied um, for, for loads of different companies um, and went for interviews and in the end I, uh, I picked the one that I felt was best suited for me, um, that had the best graduate programme and the ones that what you want to look for a graduate programme is that you then get to do a little bit of each into it. So I'd done three months of on-site management and then three months of uh, commercial uh, surveying and then I'd done three months of design management um, and then supply chain management. So at the end of my production placement, I got a full understanding and appreciation of what all those job titles and roles do, which has probably made me into the manager I am today. Um, and. I highly recommend if, if you can try to get any work placements in your summer because any self-arranged self uh, work experience is, is key and it shows on your CV that you're keen and dedicated. Um, if you want any work experience, please contact us. Um, once the, uh, the COVID pandemic is over and done with, um, we can get, so hopefully we can get uh, more site visits and work placements on site. Um, in the meantime, I'm more than happy doing more tours um, just so that you can get a good understanding, a good feeling of, of what it is to become a project manager in the construction these days. So I hope you enjoy it um, and we'll do the site tour. So thank you. We are currently on site at Gascoigne West Phase 1 in Barking. Um, I'm going to be doing a site tour with you today and uh, we're going to be going through all the different stages of the groundworks from piling to pile caps, the ground beams, all the way through to services until we get to our slab design. Um, we've also got a few tower grain bases on site. Um, so step by step, as I get to each section, I'm gonna be turning the camera around and, and explain a little bit more detail, just to give you a brief overview of where we are and the works that we plan to be doing. Okay, so this is the first section. I'm gonna turn the camera around now. So these are the uncut piles so these piles on site these are the ones that go 20 meters down these are 600 mil in diameter and this is the reinforcement that is inside um, and then as you see we get down to our cut off level which is the design level then to be able to form the pile caps so if we go over to this one we can see that these have been cut down the foam that is around the rebar that the hours of lift off has been cut down and removed and then now this is the concrete blinding that we have in place just to be able to make sure that we have a sturdy base for when this pile cap reinforcement is put in place and then this is one of the reinforcement pile caps that have been put in place with the starter bars link bars already in place 
you can see that we're using the core decks as shattering these trick track bars these bars are in place to ensure that we get good coverage between the concrete touching this core X and the concrete touching the rebar um, and these are then cast all in together to be able to give the complete coverage on site and as you look through the reinforcement you can see that these are the piles one two three and then this pile cap is designed for a free pile cap and then that sits on them and then the load is transferred up this column that will then be continued up through the building and you can see there over here we have the crane base these are one of the biggest bases we have on site um, this crane base is going to be formed for TC2 that is then going to be cast as one solid lump with the frame in place and be able to um, do all the load distributions up and down the building for block C. So we're just now at block B and I'm going to show you some pile testing which is a static load testing that we do on the piles and this is to ensure that once the building is fully erected all the dead load and weight load of the building is transferred to the piles and that it does not damage the pile. So we are now proving that the weight designed it, it can take is, is accurate to what it says on the bits of paper. So if I turn this around now and I'll explain a little bit more. So as you can see this, this is a static load test. We do these on certain piles and these are barriers around. And as you can see, this is the load tested on the pile. And then this weight and it has a jack on it. So then these beams are then anchored down to the anchor piles. So these are separate piles that are on the outside and then the weight is then anchored down through these beams into these piles and then all the weight is then pushed down onto this test pile and then now we're going to be able to get readings for tomorrow to ensure that this can take all the design loading um, any issues then flag straight away and we're notified to the structural engineer but so far everything's been good we're now going to be walking over to block a where we're going to be looking at the progress of what we have up in here this is the first block we started um, so you should be able to see quite a lot more progress that we have, especially with regards to at higher level where we're now casting ground beams. Hi, uh, so we're just now at block A. Um, I'm going to be showing you some of the piles that are being cut down and then we're going to be having the pile caps on top of them. And then obviously the loads transfer down into the ground beams. So if we go down into one of the excavations, you'll be able to see what we have going on. So this is ladders down into good line four trench and as you can see these are the piles that we have on site these are the reinforcements still that are transferred the load all the way to, to the bottom this is the pile and this is managed to get cut off to the level and then this is the outline position of the pile cap that is going to be installed um, and now if we go to the next trench you'll be able to see what we have going on So if we go up, if we go a little bit further along, you can see we're actually built up in a residential area. So we have almost a thousand residents around us. We have Gaskell and School just opposite. And these are our new offices block over there. So you can see that we are a very built up, congested area. And this is why we have to ensure that everything that we're doing is noise controlled. Um, for this environment so as we go down this is the reinforcement cage that has now been put on top and you can see this <clears throat> so if I go a little bit closer this is the reinforcement pile cap and you can see that the cap is sat on each pile and then this is only a, a two cap pile cap this one where it just sits the load on the, these two here so you can see the reinforcement these are lapped these laser bars go across the main bars in the middle and they span and lace together. And then these pole caps here, they're then tied on to the pole reinforcement that comes up to keep it all together. This is the trick track. And this here is then got shuttering this backfield against it to ensure that we got good coverage on the outside reinforcement. And if I go to the next few, you'll be able to see what I mean. So get out of this one. So we're actually 
still on the early stages of the construction project. I've been here since demolition stage. Um, I started in July and we are now in May. Um, so July 2019 was when it was literally just um, a field of all new houses, that, uh, the existing houses that need to be demolished. Um, and that is a complete different process of enabling works itself. Uh, removing all the asbestos in the buildings, contaminated ground, um, and then to get to a nice empty field like this, it takes a lot to get in. So this is, for example, some of the shuttering that we do. This is the core deck shuttering. So instead of using the timber shutters that are going to be in the ground, because these are in the ground level, below ground, um, we use this. So we basically use the trick track. You can see what I mean, that the reinforcement has got a clear space. So when we pour the concrete, it's got a 50 mil cover minimum. And that is the main thing we require. So again, this is another two pole cap, which has the pole cap at the bottom and one at the back over there. And this allows all the load to be transferred through to this with we're going to be having starter column bars installed over there a little bit like we had on the other side so let me carry on and i'm going to turn around and i'm going to go over to look at the ground beams we have so i'm going to walk across site now to the front of block a and you'll see that we have a few more reinforcement pile caps that we're about to pour um, and then this one here this one was poured yesterday and you can see we have the column bars already already cast in and essentially so tomorrow where these blue marks are is where we're going to be carrying on this reinforcement up so we have some more starter bars coming through and the starter bars here they allow for the columns to be then carry on lace up so the lacing will can then continue and lap onto each one so it continues up up to the building and you can see what we have here we have the ground beam about to be cast and essentially this ground beam is then sat on a waterproofing membrane and then we also still have all the lightning protection that is being fixed in position so again the lightning protection is fixed onto the columns this original lightning protection was there again same detail fixed onto the piles so then the um, the lightning protection system is then fixed all the way through to the pile carries on the way up to the columns and this will carry on all the way up to the roof so you can see here this is the edge beam detail this edge beam detail is then cast into a shutter uh, not different from the uh, the core deck um, and you can see it just over here and this this reinforcement is cast in to this peri system that we have go back to a traditional setup and you can see here that we're using these anchor bolts here that then thread through to the other side so then we can make our shutter and then we remove this section and then we can infill this section with ground to make sure that we can then build up the ground floor slab so the ground floor slab will be in line with this um, bit of a, a sequence and a process you have to do just to ensure that we don't sort of gridlock yourself in so that we can still be able to put our drainage services in electrical services in without having to go through any external ground beams so it's very important to have the sequence in place, to know what needs to go first um, and then what needs to go second and not jump in that order. Um, having quite clear um, quality strict hold points to ensure that any of these clashes don't happen and they're normally outlined early in a quality plan. Um, this is the lift pit, the lift reinforcement. Again, it's a bit more of a bigger setup. Um, essentially, the lift core is one of the strongest and the, the main structure of the building and all the other ones tie into it. Hence why it's got a lot more reinforcement, a lot more ties that crisscross within with each other. Um, and then this is the main core that's going to be going up first in the, in the jump form. So I hope to do another video once we've managed to do that of the slip form and the jump form that goes up the building in the core first. Um, I just want to go over and show you final sections of the reinforcement. So again, this is another cage that was made today. Um, I want to show you the prefab area that we have on site. These are the individual reinforcement um, bars, laces, U-bars, everything that we have. We have them in the storage area. You can see this. These here, this is where we have the individual different types. 
this is where they come in. We check the reinforcement, check the supplier. Um, these are B12 bars, so 10 mil all the way up to 25 mil. And then these ones here are 50 mil. So all these different bars are, are ordered and then we normally prefab them on site. And this is essentially what we then make up the ground beans with and the power caps. So this here, this is some trestles. This means we're making this ground beam, not on the floor, it's off the floor. This allows for sort of manual handling um, and, it, and it eases the back really of the steel fixes. It's a very hard job to be here every day listening to the steels, making sure all the tires are in place. So the, the less effort we can have of them always bending over, the trestles are one of the best practice. And also it leaves uh, a better area for being able to lift them off the ground. So I hope you've enjoyed the little tutorial that we have on site. I, um, I hope to carry on doing these videos just to give a bit more detail of the, the different process that we have on site. Again, we are really at the early stages of this program, but uh, every week and every month we are um, ramping up to be able to get above slab. Um, and then that way we can start doing the high level works, which then obviously would then open up all the dry line and internal trades. So yeah, exciting. So anything else, please, um, I'm gonna put my email address on so you can ask me any questions, any details, um, and hopefully, after the, the COVID outbreak, the pandemic, we'll be able to start having site visits again. So I look forward to it. So thank you.